In today's video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to pair this Grandstream GWN7660 access point to this GWN7062 Wi-Fi router. So basically, this router is going to be the master controller for both of these devices. So if you're interested in seeing how this is done, then stick around for this video. Okay, so before we get actually started with the configuration process, let me just show you how I have things wired up here for this video. So here we're looking at the Grandstream GWN7062 Wi-Fi router. That WAN port is connected to the Netgear Nighthawk, I believe it's the 1100 series router, coming out of the LAN port of the 7062. The black cable is running underneath my desk to a PoE injector. The other side of the PoE injector is coming up to the GWN7660 access point, and that's how this is being powered up. The lights on the top of the access point are purple, although looking in my confidence monitor, I can see that they're not coming across as purple, but the purple lights indicate that the device has not been paired with the controller and is ready to go. So that being said, let's switch over to the computer now and we'll get this whole thing configured. Okay, so we're signed into the Grandstream GWN7062 router. You can see here we do have internet access, although the speeds aren't that great. Don't forget, I am connected to an LTE hotspot router. So, but at least I do have access of some sort. If we look down here, you can see currently we don't have any access devices connected. Now that said, I do want to show you that this router already has a Wi-Fi SSID set up, a GWN Cloud Wi-Fi test. I was playing with the new GWN Cloud the other day and created this Wi-Fi there, so it's still set up inside the router. So we're going to leave that as is, and we're going to pair the GWN7660 so that it also is broadcasting this same SSID. Now that said, to do that, let's go down to the left menu here where it says Access Devices. We'll click on the down arrow and we're going to come to configuration and you can see the only device listed here is the router itself the gwn7062 so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the top here and we're going to pair access point or we're going to click the pair ap button so as soon as i click this the gwn7660 should be found automatically so let's go ahead and see if that is the case Okay, so pair AP and the only one available for pairing because again, it's in its initial state, hasn't been paired to any controller yet at this point in time, is the GWN7660. So we're going to go ahead and select it and we're gonna click on pair. And it says it's been operated successfully. So we're just gonna wait now for the access point to actually configure. If I flip back over to camera two for a second, I don't know if you could see that the lights are flashing. They are no longer purple, but they are flashing blue. And as soon as they become solid blue, this device will be paired with the 7062 router. Okay, so I don't know if you could see that, but it has stopped blinking and they are solid blue. And let me switch back to the computer for a second. You could see now on the screen, we not only have the router here with the green star, but we also have the GWN7660 as well. So the two devices are being controlled by the router's embedded controller. At this point, we, if we click on the actual GWN7660 access point to edit it, you could see here, we can actually give it a name and everything is set to use radio settings. You do have the control of that individually if you want to, like with the channel width and the channel settings and things like that, the radio power. But where is this information coming from? Well, if we go back to the actual Wi-Fi settings and we go to the radio link. So if we look here, these radio settings are the radio settings that are being provisioned out to the 7660 access point. So let's go back to the access devices for a second. Let's go to configuration. Let's just say you no longer want the device to be controlled by the router. It's as simple as selecting it and then coming up to delete. But before we do that, you could look at the fact that you have other options here. You can take over AP, you can configure the AP. That just brings us back to the same screen that I showed you before in edit mode. If there was a firmware version available, for the access point, we can upgrade it here. 
and then we can delete it. Now I'm going to delete it to remove it from the pairing. Once I unpair it though, it's also going to set it back to factory defaults. Continue to delete the selected APs. Once deleted, the router will unpair. And I don't know if you could see it now, but the lights went out. They did flash red for a moment. They should come back on with a green status. There we go. And once it completes the actual boot up process, these will be back to being that purplish pink. All right, so pretty simple, straightforward to pair the device, to unpair the device to a master controller. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you like this type of video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I post here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions as always. Please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.